the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Today we are celebrating the third Sunday of Advent, and we call it the Gaudete Sunday. It is a Sunday to rejoice in the coming of our Lord. And today we will now light the third candle of our, past, of our Advent wreath. In our celebration of this year of mercy that was opened last Tuesday, the entire church are one in joining together in, in recognizing the mercy that God has for us. And now we would like to join in our own expression of mercy by works of compassion and kindness. And uh, the jar of that mercy, compassion, and random acts of charity we have done this week will now be offered to the altar. My brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fall, through my fall. To my most famous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Zephaniah, 
Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings as at festivals. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Whoever has two clocks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, do not practice extortion, do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with his Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with a quenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass today, today is Gaudete Sunday. It's the day, the third Sunday of Advent, to which we joyfully anticipate the coming of our Lord. The readings of today is full of happy readings, happy occasions. Sakanaya in the first reading expresses how the people should rejoice in the Lord for they were not any more slaves. For now the Lord God has forgiven them of their sins and now 
they can start rejoicing. Second reading in the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, it is where we get the title of the Gaudiya, it's a rejoice in the Lord always. It is in that spirit of happiness that is so contagious that it brings about something good in us. When you are happy, there's always that consequence of being good, of doing good, because you're happy. And I remember there was a time I was, uh, I was in the Philippines. I served there for 10 years. I was assigned to a, to a poor parish. In the beginning of my ministry as a priest, I was asked to build a church and it was starting from scratch. So um, we're kind of short always. I mean, I don't know where I'm gonna get my next food or you know how to sustain the parish. Uh, we don't have a lot of collection. We're not used to how you're doing it here in the States where in, you have your envelopes and then every week you, you, you put something there, you pledge that for, for the year and, and we can at least budget the things that we would need to budget. Uh, that's unlike in the Philippines, you don't have that. You know, it we depend on the mood of the people. <laughs> you know, if they wake up, oh, I'd be generous today. I give a little bit more. And it depends on the mood. So, well, because of that, I need also to think of my subsistence. And most of the priests there are like that. And and I'm so happy to recall I have a I have my archbishop there in the Philippines, who's so fatherly. He's like a father to us. And we would go to him in times that we are short of money to buy food and you know and to to pay for the bills. We would go to him in, 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 in the city and ask for money. Like, you know, your son's going to you asking for money, you know. So but then here's here's the wonderful story there. We would go there early in the morning, as soon as the office opens at about eight thirty or nine, and they would be there. And we would be asking first the secretary who is a nun. And he said, Sister What's the mood like today? <laughs> How's the feeling of the Archbishop today? You know, oh, well, it's like a volcano today. Okay, set me up tomorrow. <laughs> I don't want to go there when he is not happy, you know? So when I ask him, sister, how's she doing today? Is he happy today? I think he's happy today. Set me in. I'll be the first in line. And who's the next priest? You know, who's in the office right now? Oh, this so and so priest. Oh, I think I'll go back next week. He would not be happy talking to the priest. So, so I'd rather come back next week. He's happy, and you know, he feels okay. I mean, that's that's how it is, isn't it? When, when you're happy, when you're glad, that's that's when you are more generous. Even when you talk to your parents, when you're asking for something, you check first. What's the feeling like? If you go to your boss's office, you want to ask for a raise. You want to ask first. Oh, did he receive his Christmas card already? <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, let's not go there anymore. So, you know, these are human expressions. But it's true. It's when you are joyful that you become God-like. You know? God is so generous to us. God has been giving all the time. He has always been giving. So can you imagine an angry God who is so giving? You know, I cannot reconcile that image of an angry God and a God who is giving. For me, God is always happy. I have seen this picture of a laughing Christ. Oh, that is so nice to look at, isn't it? I don't know if you have seen that. I mean, I've seen one of those pictures of a laughing Christ. It's not so kind of disseminated. I mean, it's not in the mainstream. Or there was, there was this picture I saw, Jesus laughing, and he was sitting, and there's a child, and a child out here, and a child out there. He was just bursting in laughter. I mean, that's a wonderful picture to look at. Isn't it? Sometimes we have an image of God that is angry or stern. I mean, not laughing at all. Like, mm, wait until you do something. I'm going to punish you right away. You know, th that kind, it, it doesn't make you close to God. On this Sunday, we are, we are told by the scriptures, we have 
a happy God. We have a God who is joyful and He would like you to have the same joy that He has in His heart. So that like Him, we could be like Him in all things, such as we can be kind, we can be generous, we can be helpful to others because we are happy. The Gospel today was a continuation of last Sunday's Gospel to which people were, were going in great numbers to the river Jordan because they listened to John the Baptist and John the Baptist told them the Messiah is coming. Prepare yourself. Repent and prepare yourself. And then they all went because they wanted to become part of a movement. A movement to be able to change and embrace the good things that the Messiah has to give them. And that is salvation, freedom, happiness, things that they don't have. And now they're going to have it. So they were asking Janelle, what do I need to do to become part of this movement towards the acceptance of the Messiah? And Jen said, be generous. If you have two cloths, give one to the other. Give one to someone who has none. Then the Pharisees in this case, what do we need to do? So be honest. Be honest. The soldiers came, what do we need to do? Don't intimidate and extort money from people. Be fair. Be, there should be justice in the land. You know, when you do all of these things, you do acts of kindness, you do acts of generosity, and you are honest in your dealings with one another, then you become Godlike. You prepare your soul to become a happy soul. An honest person, though sometimes too difficult, a person who does the right things, sometimes will encounter challenges. But let me tell you this, between him who is honest and faces challenges in his life, and him who is dishonest and oppresses everyone, the two of them, between the two of them, the one who is honest sleeps very well in the evening. He is the one who is peaceful. In short, he is the one who is joyful. Because if you can sleep in the evening with a clear conscience that you have not hurt anyone, that you have been kind to your people, then joy will set in your heart. Joy will set in that is Gaudete Sunday. That is what we are celebrating today. Earlier at Mass today, the job was given. And we have this project. We wanted to become part of this movement of doing kindness to others. So we have, for this time alone, we have people who did it, responded to the call of doing kind things, acts of kindness to others, and we will try to fill this huge jar out here with kindness throughout this year of mercy. And someone was asking me like, Father, what shall I do as an act of kindness? I've been taking care of my, my, my parents, I've been taking care of others in family. Is that enough? Yes, it is. Acts of kindness. I would like to challenge you even more. When you do acts of kindness, do something that you don't normally do. Do something that you would exert a little bit of an effort. But I want you also to be thankful. If you're doing kindness as a habit already, be grateful. That's a gift. Not everybody does it. If you're already kind to your neighbors, if you've been always there when they needed something, you know, when, when, when you are readily available to help others, if you're doing this task already, Feeding the poor, giving them food, giving, you know, taking meals to those who are homebound, giving communion to those who are sick. If that is part of your of your daily, daily uh, practice, be grateful. Because you are doing a good thing. But for this year of mercy, do something even more. Challenge yourself. I'm already doing this. Can I do even more? Can I add more to what I'm doing? Because in that way, as 
as Mother Teresa, St. Teresa of Calcutta would say, in describing what real generosity is, he, she says, give and give and give and give until it hurts. Until it hurts. Because it's only when it's an effort to do something that it becomes more meritorious. So whenever an opportunity comes by for you to do something good, grab the opportunity. Do good. But if you wanted to even do even more meritorious things, grace-filled things, don't wait for opportunity to come to do good. But create opportunities to do good. Create opportunities. Build one. Make sure that you and entice others, motivate others to do so. This would be a whole year of mercy and compassion. And hopefully, what we plant as little seeds of kindness will one day grow to become a huge tree where people will look at, where people will imitate, where there will be big fruit of kindness in the world. May this joy of looking forward to the coming of our Savior in Christmas bring in our hearts the generosity to share the joy that we have to others in the world. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of all of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God and not made, and so sincere to the Father, to hear all things to pray, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the hope of the Spirit, was the heart of the Virgin Mary, for our sake, he was crucified and the Father's blood. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He has ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again for all the church of the living and the dead, and is seen in the world of heaven. I believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Lord and the Lord of God, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord of the Lord. I believe one of the holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that God's love for us is beyond our ability to comprehend, we are confident of the power of that love and offer to give these prayers and needs. May the shepherds of the church, especially Pope Francis and Reverend John G. Newman, our bishop, guide us to life of simplicity as lived by those shepherds who first encountered the Christ child. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. May those who lead nations avoid the temptation to use their power and privilege to build themselves up at the expense of their citizens. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. May we realize that one of the greatest ways we can respond to God's love is to love others, especially those who are hungry, homeless, oppressed, or in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. May those who are sick experience the healing power and love of Christ, especially through the care and concern we show them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For those serving in the military, May they be protected from harm and return home safely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. May those who have died find eternal rest in the presence of our Father and the Lord Jesus, rejoicing with the angels and saints in the kingdom, especially Rafaela Marco, Rolando Ruiz, Roberto Hernandez, and Martha Bertha Gerdowski. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Tanya and Sean Malloy, for their special intention, celebrating their first anniversary, 
for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. In faith, we offer all of these prayers to you, beloved Father. Confident that you will hear and answer them, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 748, Whatsoever You Do. Number 748. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise of the Lord is His name. For our good and the 
May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design he formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all his at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> should be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, 
her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. distress as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, I send to your apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Communion hymn is number 98, Emmanuel, number 98.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly open the inside back cover of your music hymnal and together we pray the prayer Anima Christi. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, conceal me. Do not permit me to be parted from you. From the evil of all, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And then bid me come to you. To praise you with all your sins. for a few announcements. We would like to invite you to our annual Our Catholic Appeal Dinner and Silent Auction, which will be held on December 19th. Uh, it would be tickets per person is $25 and are available after all masses in the social hall also with Miss Pat Daly outside the foyer today. Your support here will help us be able to reach our goal for our Catholic Appeal contribution to support the works of the Diocese. As of now, we're still about $10,000 short. Hopefully, we'll cut it down to a more tolerable uh, way. If not reach the goal, but at least, let's be honest about it, we just got to pay for it. So, let's pray together to pay for it. And, uh, and if whatever support you can give in to accomplish that goal, we will gladly appreciate it in behalf of the entire parish. Our sign-up sheets for extraordinary ministers of uh, Holy Communion and readers for Christmas services are posted uh, in the ministry room. So if you're available to help us out for the Christmas uh, masses, uh, please check the ministry room and and sign up for this. Uh, and, also and also outdoor servers for that time. Okay. And we have our uh, Christmas Novena Masses called Misa de Aguinaldo. It is a nine day uh, Masses, Novena, uh, to prepare ourselves for the celebration of Christmas. Uh, it's a cultural tradition, but we have introduced this in the parish for I think this will be the third year, if I'm not mistaken. And this is a wonderful sacrifice before Christmas. It starts December 16th to the 24th at 6 o'clock in the morning. That's not early. You're waking up much earlier than that. So that's not something hard. So please, me and Father Frank will be alternating in celebrating those Masses. We would like to see you here join in one or all of the Masses. Respect Life meeting will be held on Wednesday, uh, December 16th at 7.30 at the Education Building for those who would like to, you know, drop in there and, and listen and participate in this meeting. You are most welcome. We have our Christmas concert coming up. It's going to be on December 18th, Friday at 7 o'clock in the evening here in the church. Mark your calendar. The last concert that Father Frank had and his brother was well attended. It's a wonderful concert. Hopefully, you also attend this another concert, beautiful concert that our music ministry has prepared for all of us. Um, you may have noticed our jar that I mentioned in the homily. This jar will be located outside of the church. Before Mass, if you're coming in with your works of mercy and charity, there's even a piece of paper that you can write it on if you haven't done so at home. You can just roll it and drop it in that jar before Mass, or you can go and straight drop it there in the main jar uh, that we have at the altar. This would be for the whole year. It's going to be all our works of mercy that we're offering for God in celebration of these works of, uh, of this year of mercy. And also, every year, I mean, this is like the second year, I guess, I guess that we have it. We have our Christmas tree outside. Remember to bring your Christmas ornament that will represent your family. You can start 
hanging them out there now on our Christmas tree outside. So you're most welcome uh, to bring one per family uh, for that Christmas tree. May I request our communion minister to the sick to come forward? My dear sisters and brothers, you are sent from this assembly to bring the word of God and the bread of life to the sacred compound. Assure them the prayers and support of this community and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And our vocations crucifix will go to Mrs. Eleanor Chambriello. Thank you, Eleanor for uh, praying for vocations to the priesthood for and the and for our seminars and may your prayers bear fruit. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. I know Christmas shopping is just around the corner. There's a shopping stall outside for your Christmas shopping. Our cat gear t-shirts are available to support our youth outside. So uh, please, please feel free don't push each other. My mother said that. <laughs> Highly discounted out there. Dolly is there waiting for you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And now let us join in singing number 533, Christ Be Our Light, 533. Mm -hmm. 